Hello and good day. I'm Aaron Goldberg, contributing editor for IDG, and I'll be your moderator for our webcast today. Our topic and focus is on cloud governance. Organizations of every type have embraced the cloud, but with the headlong rush to the cloud, many organizations have acted before they had deployed effective cloud governance processes and models. This can be highly problematic. Fortunately, our sponsor today, Insight, and their expert speakers will help us to fully understand what some of the key needs are around cloud governance and how you can work with them to deploy effective cloud governance solutions. We'll provide insights for integrating governance with your overall cloud transformation strategy. To provide you with the best practices and expert guidance, we're fortunate to have with us today two experienced speakers to discuss this topic. John O'Shaughnessy is Senior Consultant Technology and Operations at Insight, and Richard Diver is a Cloud Security Architect also at Insight. If you'd like more information or more detail on the background of our speakers, you can click the BIOS widget that's on your console. But before we start, just a couple of things that will help you in the audience get more value from today's event. The first is you can go to the resources area and download a copy of the presentation. I actually believe, after many years of doing these events, that this is a best practice if you're an attendee. It's something I do. And I do it for three reasons. First, I like to take notes as we go along, and it's a great place to do that, right in context. Second, it's something I can use in the weeks and months to come if I'm going back to the topic and evaluating it. And third, it's also something you and our audience can share with your peers in your organization so they get value from today's event as well. It's a way to get some leverage. And while you're in that resources area, there are other valuable informational assets you can download as well. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Insight, for making today's event possible. For without their support, we don't get a chance to bring you this great information. So let's start by looking at some of the security issues that are becoming common as organizations progress along their journey to digital transformation. John, can you tell us a little more about this? Absolutely. So at Insight's cloud and data center transformation organization, really we focus on helping our clients understand their environment, modernize their environment, and secure their critical platforms. It's a big process. We need to involve lots of parts of the organization to help them through that digital transformation. One of the things about looking at their infrastructure is understanding the security requirements, understanding the governance of that environment. One of the key facets of a modern environment is it doesn't just sit in one place. It is a hybrid data center. There'll be things living on premises. There'll be parts of an organization's data center that are out in a public cloud, maybe multiple public clouds. How do you organize that environment? How do you control the data in that environment? How do you secure the data in that environment? And how do you operate in that more complex environment? These are the things that we help organizations figure out. One of the things, again, as I mentioned, is that most organizations will end up with a hybrid cloud strategy. Workloads will be split perhaps very evenly between those remaining on-premises, ideally in a public cloud type arrangement, and perhaps 50% out in the public cloud. And there's many different challenges that we have to work together to help figure out what is the best fit for a client's workloads in these environments. Richard, do you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. What we're seeing from a lot of customers that have taken this journey or already have taken the journey is that they find security is actually one of the key reasons to move to cloud. Uh, some of the increased platform capabilities, having that as maybe the front end before getting to more sensitive information at the back end. And so understanding, again, exactly why you want to go to the cloud, what benefits you're getting from the cloud, and making that move strategically is a, a real important step. Despite having some limited experience with the cloud, you know, many businesses still struggle to identify the optimal cloud platform. John and Richard, you both worked with a lot of customers, and you have the deep technical knowledge to help them. And can you help us by talking about what you're seeing out there in the real world? Absolutely. So one of the things we're seeing is that there is quite a bit of complexity. Many organizations are starting to move workloads back from the public cloud. And the reason for that is that they're exceeding their planned budget or they're finding performance problems with those items out in the public cloud. And we look at that saying it's not a fault of public cloud. It's really a problem in doing proper analysis. 
We like to help our clients understand what are the requirements of their existing workloads to help determine what is the best way to move forward. Does this application and workload belong in the public cloud? Does it require certain things regarding low latency, for example, to stay on premises? Again, there are a number of facets regarding making the best fit selection. Richard, do you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, we've seen uh, kind of both ends of the spectrum where sometimes the customer will understand that the cloud is actually potentially more secure from a fundamental physical operations, staffing, geographical disbursement. Uh, There's a lot of benefits of the cloud platform, and so they'll want to adopt that to run their workloads to become more compliant than they can be with their existing infrastructure. But on the other side, we also see Again, different organizations that will take the approach of uh, what they have already is as secure as they need it to be. And moving to even just the wording of public cloud uh, comes with a connotation that it might be less secure. So understanding, again, what what is secure by default versus what governance controls you need to put in place to ensure it remains secure, the changes and modifications they make as part of the adoption of cloud can can actually weaken some of that security or they can uh, have misconfiguration and some of those will then obviously lead towards pulling the data back or pulling the services back from that cloud vendor. So it's definitely interesting and important to understand what the expectations were going in, what we found when we actually got there, and then if you're going to make the choice to come back, uh, realizing when is the right time to, to make that move again in the future. Insight has built a very compelling framework, the cloud transformation framework. Can you give us some more details, John, and and how cloud governance fits into it? Absolutely. We see cloud governance fitting in along this circle. And you'll see at the top of the circle, in the middle, we've got envision and plan. Around to the right, build and optimize. Further around to the right, manage and advance. And the reason this is drawn as a circle is the process doesn't stop. As you plan and envision, you begin your build out. Once you're building, you may realize there are other things that need to be further planned out, and then you work towards operationalizing. Moving to manage in advance, then you're managing your infrastructure. You're improving your infrastructure. You're coming up with things that you would like to improve in that environment, which then wraps around the circle into planning and then back around into optimizing. Throughout that process, we see cloud governance coming in in many steps. You need to understand the organization of your data. You need to understand the organization of the the folks managing your data. And as you understand those things, you may learn things change in, in production. Therefore, you've got to come back and modify your plans. So these are the many facets of the cloud transformation framework that we use in our projects with our clients. So let's talk a little bit specifically about cloud governance. What exactly is cloud governance? Cloud governance is an extension of IT governance, and it's extending IT governance into the cloud. So then what's IT governance? IT governance is a framework that provides structure for organizations to ensure that IT investments are supporting business objectives. It's key to implement a formal framework so that you can measure your results against your strategic goals. Formal frameworks allow input for all the key stakeholders, not just the participants within IT, for example. We talk about cloud governance. It's important that as you're migrating to the cloud, that you understand how to best integrate your governance across all of the platforms that you've maintained. How do you get started with cloud governance? There's really no need to reinvent the wheel. There are many IT governance models out there. I've listed three here, COBIT, ITIL, and CMMI. And they all take a different approach. COBIT is a more risk-focused approach in terms of a government's platform and framework. ITIL is a very process-oriented framework. CMMI is a maturity-focused framework. It doesn't mean you need to pick just one. You'd like to pick a framework that matches your organization's culture. And it's perfectly okay to mix and match key components to make sure that you get all your requirements met. Many organizations blend facets of all three of these, for example. So again, what's the purpose of this? You need to extend your IT governance framework into the cloud. It's key to understand your security requirements, 
it's key to understand your assets, asset management, CMDB databases. It's important to understand change control. How does change control work today in your on-premises environment? And how might you extend that to the cloud? One of the things that you can do when you're taking your IT governance to the cloud is look at the tools and processes that the cloud providers make available to you. Take advantage of tagging, for example. Take advantage of the detailed usage logs. Take advantage of the change logs that they provide and figure out ways to integrate them into your own pre-existing environments for cloud governance. So, Richard, how does Insight document or portray a cloud security reference framework? And can you tell us about the most important components of it? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we developed this uh, reference framework because we found uh, a lot of the times on a journey towards the cloud, there's so many different facets of governance that had to be taken into consideration that it was never one team that could ever know it all. So down the left-hand side, we're really mapping out the controls that we're trying to apply to existing infrastructure, understand where are we at today, where do you want to be in the future, why are we going to cloud, and what are the kind of controls we need to think about implementing. Cloud comes with a lot of controls already built in. It's really how we tweak and tune them that uh, makes the difference into kind of settling into your own shoes as to whether this fits right for you or not. So we uh, go through and carry out the controls first. Along the bottom, we then have all of the different areas of governance, risk, and compliance to ensure all of the business teams are involved, understanding this new world, this new space we're moving into, ensuring that even including the, the legal team understands the differences on the, the cloud specifics that might come with that your vendor management selection piece, and obviously the differences in risks. Um, we could then go up the other side on the right there, which is the cloud operations, and see other teams ready to attack this uh, new challenge because cloud comes with a whole bunch of different capabilities that take time to understand, both from operations and development, which is generally the reason why we move to cloud, but it can't be underestimated that those teams need to ensure that they're integrating the technologies correctly. So then the core part in the center is really the kind of technologies that we look at, and that's more in my, my space is to really understand what do we have today and what are we going to gain in the cloud, and then how do we get those two things working together. So sometimes we need to change some of these components, and other times we need to um, adapt and modify them to the cloud. So, John, is that uh, is the elements of this that you also step into as well? That's absolutely correct. You know, again, the things that we look at are how do you take that reference framework and extend it throughout uh, the management of an existing IT organization. But really, very similar. And uh, we use this this same framework every time we're beginning the conversation, or when we're halfway through the project. At different times, you need to come back and, and refocus. You know, where where are all the efforts going? So traditionally, from a security point of view, a lot of the efforts were put around the perimeter network. Um, identity is clearly becoming one of the key pieces that we need to focus on. And after those two areas are then uh, kind of nailed down a bit better, all the other boxes here, uh, each one of these is critical to the success of the whole. And we're seeing more and more a security operations center focus, which is more than just logging logs and looking at events, but actually uh, being ready to respond to that breach. Um, there's, a, again, a key focus in those areas. Well, Richard and John, you know, you work across a wide range of customers on these type of projects and see a lot. What are the common questions or issues that you see cropping up regularly? Cost is always a big one. People want to understand how things in the cloud will cost differently than they're charging for them today. So that is a big topic of conversation. Yeah, I think uh, the the one in the center there about uh, the agility of the end user. So one of the reasons I come across frequently, or from a security point of view at least, of moving to the cloud is because the restrictions that might be put in place against their existing infrastructure. So having to come across a VPN, having to authenticate against Active Directory, or having multiple identities to use. So certainly the, the whole how do I improve the user journey is definitely a key one that I see regularly. Other things that we're seeing, again, are the, on the top and the right, is what should I move to the cloud and how do I manage it when it gets out there? So we work to help our clients understand what they have currently and how these different applications and workloads communicate with one another. Because we find that if you separate things out, you may have latency issues that you didn't have if everything were in a single data center. So again, we try to help our clients understand the whole of their environment to figure out what should live in one environment versus another. 
Yeah, I'd agree with that one as well. From a security point of view, some workloads probably shouldn't go to the cloud, at least not without some modification. And it's not so much that the cloud isn't the right place to move it, but if something is well-known and well-secured in place where it is today, if it can't adopt some of the newer methodologies and governance controls that you're trying to implement in this brand new, shiny cloud environment, you might as well leave it where it is and just lock it down and protect it behind all your firewalls and, and not move it at all and go through the effort of trying to lift and shift and not make any improvements. So there's quite a few times you have to we challenge the customers to, you know, really consider adopting the modern ways of securing workloads and not just lift a VM from on premises and moving it to a cloud. It's not really the point of moving to the cloud unless they have to get out of their data center or there's some other factor of uh, driving the, the change. Definitely a big focus on the what. The other one then would be monitoring. So when it is up there, how do I monitor it with adopting a lot of new technologies? There's a lot of new skills that are required. So how do I manage containers? How do I develop and deploy? How do I make sure my code is secure? Absolutely. I, I think clients are often wondering what else is changing. Are they just moving the location of some of their systems? Or is it broader than that? And again, we try to help our clients figure out what should be happening at this time? How can they best take advantage of these new technologies? For if you just leap into it, then you're in the situation where maybe it's not a good fit. Maybe you're spending more money on a monthly basis than you had anticipated. So again, we like to work with our clients to understand their requirements so that they can move forward in the fashion that's best suited to them. It can certainly be overwhelming when you see the plethora of opportunities and changes you could make. So it's a balance between doing what you know how to do already and then incrementally improving and increasing. There's some fundamental architectural changes you should make to microservices and segmentation, a lot of other great good practices that maybe have been impractical or expensive to do before that you can now just do natively if you design it from day one that way. But I think whatever journey a customer takes into a cloud, it's never too late to do security and governance. It just is easier to do at the beginning than it is to try to do it afterwards. So I always try to encourage um, more upfront planning and preparation before moving. But again, it's never too late to reapply and adjust something that's already in play. Absolutely. So again, at Cloud and Data Center Transformation of Insight, we have different organizations that can help you where you best need help. As part of the consulting organization, we try best to understand the requirements that our clients may have, help them figure out should they move, what should be moved, what is the best breakdown, do things live in multiple locations. And once we're talking about moving things, how do we handle that migration? How do you do a migration with the least amount of downtime? What are things going to cost after this is all done? What are the impacts to the organization? How are people going to be organized differently to manage things in a public cloud versus on-premises? These are all things that we can help our clients figure out. And back over to you, Aaron. Thanks very much. Unfortunately, it looks like we've come to the end of our allotted time for our webcast today. But I would like to thank our speakers, John and Richard, for sharing their experience, processes, and expertise. Just an excellent job today, guys. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Insight. But most of all, I'd like to thank you and our audience. We know you have a busy day, and thank you for making us part of it. Now, there's a lot of additional information you can take advantage of in the resources area of your console. There are links you can click on for more information. And in fact, Insight has created a specific link for this event that you'll see. Simple to find, just look for the slash cloud governance on the link, and that will take you to the specific landing page for this event. For IDG and Insight, this is Aaron Goldberg. Have a great day.